It is Mother's Day. We can say boldly with confidence, if not for mothers, we wouldn't be here today. Amen. Amen. Today's message is entitled, Mama Mia, the show behind the show. Amen. Everybody say, Mama Mia. Here I go again. You know, I started to kind of come up with a clever title to kind of mix Mama Mia, Here I Go Again, and Here I Go Again on My Own by White Snake. Mama Mia, here I go again on my own. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that. Going down the only road I ever knowed. Uh, I was raised on that, and so blame my father. Amen. But today's message is Mama Mia, the show behind the show. Uh, kids, sorry, thank you, Montreal. I'm just all out of whack day. All of our kids, grades K through five, babies, kids, K, kids, grades K through five, can go be with Sister Karen. Uh, youth and teenagers, grades 6 through 12, go be with uh, Brother Dylan, Sister Kirsten. So kids this way, teenagers that way. Kids this way, teenagers that way. Go on, get out of here. Give your mama some peace. She's tired of seeing you. She needs, th she needs a half hour without you bothering her. But we love you, though. We love you, though. Go ahead, children and teens. Uh, my bad, Montreal. Thank you. You said it like three times. I'm like, what is this man saying behind my head? I'm trying to focus. I'm trying to dial in. I appreciate you, man of God. I appreciate you. Um, Mama Mia, the show behind the show. Anybody here ever been, whether it's your your child or you yourself or any kind of ways? How many of y'all ever been to a school play, a school production or something, or a musical? How many of y'all ever been to a professional performance, a uh, not necessarily Broadway, but a show or a musical or anything like that? Uh, for those who have not, uh, those who have can help me tell you, it is an amazing production to see stuff happening like that, especially live because what you see is a beautiful, put-together, uh, seemingly transitionless show, a performance where things just slide and move in the right times and the right spaces. Uh, but what you realize is there is so many people working behind the scenes to make the viewer see what they see, that there's far more happening behind the curtain than there is happening in front of the curtain. Amen. It's kind of like an iceberg. You only see 10% of the iceberg above the water. 90% happens below the surface, right? The same thing happens at any of these shows. Back when I was on TV and did my little TV stint, I learned back then just how much happens and goes on behind the screen, right? We, you presented this show. You presented this, this, this thing to watch, but there's so much moving and happening behind the scenes and earpieces and, and directions being given and all this stuff being said. And so until you've ever been there, here's the reality. Until you've ever been behind the curtain, it's hard to appreciate what actually goes on back there. Until you've been behind the show, it's hard to truly appreciate what you're being shown as the performance, right? So I, ha having done that, I, I can echo that. But here's the thing, mothers. Until we can realize the work that goes into motherhood and what happens behind the curtain, only then can we truly appreciate what we see visibly and outside for everybody else. And all the mamas said amen. Because it's not just the, the, the kids are here this morning. It's not just seeing the mothers with all your, your hair done and your kids dressed. No, that's the show. The show behind the show was this morning you had to scramble, get them up out of bed, comb their hair, give them something to eat, get your clothes ironed, their clothes ironed, and you barely had enough time to put on your makeup in the car on the way here as your husband drove because you had to put on the show this morning while he was in there taking his time, putting on his tie and everything else. And you, he was just putting, he was taking care of himself, but mama, you had to get the babies ready. You got them dressed. Come on, somebody. The show behind the show. And so I'm here today to tell the mothers, and we all need to look at them and realize that what we see is wonderful. You look at these beautiful children all dressed nice, and they smell nice, and they look nice. And ladies, you look wonderful today on Mother's Day. But we understand today how much work and effort that you've had putting in since about three hours ago. You've been working nonstop. So mamas, here's to you. Let's give it up for the mothers today. You mothers are the show behind the show. Amen. Uh, I, I, I've always, I can't tell you how much it blessed me when our, our kids were younger. Now, first of all, fellas, I don't want to just throw us under the bus because sometimes we would like to have some input on what our children wear. But we don't. Not until they get a little older. You know, it's one of the things, about the time my son turned three, I said, ain't we done with the onesies? 
I understand that. <laughs> but by the time Caleb turned three, I said, babe, I think he's past the, the onesie outfit. I know they're cute, but he's about to start pre-K. We need to get out of that onesie. It's time to put on some jeans or something. Put that boy in some pants, some pantaloons. All jokes aside, I was always blessed because I never had to worry about my boys. My wife did an amazing job of making sure that my babies always looked immaculate and good and looked good and had on their, and their hair was brushed. Listen, Caleb's now 14. I looked at him today. He said, everything's fine. Everything's good. I said, except the back of your head. It's become a thing. Ask my wife. I'll get on him. Son, have some pride in your last name. For God's sake, would you please go brush your hair? I'm about to knock some sense either into you or out of you. I know you're smart as I'll get out, but my, how hard is it to get another mirror and look at... How many of y'all... Come on, guys. Look, look in the mirror with a mirror. Short, come on. It's almost like they still need mama to do everything for them at 14 years old. But it was a blessing to me because my wife was such a good mother. Our boys always had... They were always put together. They were never lacking I never had to worry. I, listen, I ain't trying to throw nobody on the bus, but I, I never had to worry if somebody was coming over, the house being a mess or anything else. My wife was just an amazing mother, is an amazing mother. And I just know I've seen for 14 years now, almost 15 years, the show behind the show. So I'm appreciative to every mother, every woman of God here today who puts in hour upon hour, week after week, doing all that you do to make a house a home, uh, be it being a wife to your husbands, being a, a mother to your kids, whatever the case may be. I know not everybody has both those situations going on, but I want to applaud you and thank you for all the effort and time that you put in day after day, week after week with your children and your responsibilities. And all the men in the room said, Amen. Amen. Today's scripture is a very popular, famous scripture. It's going to be out of the book of Proverbs chapter 31. We're going to learn biblically about the show behind the show and, and what that means and what goes into that. Can I tell you all something, though? We're about to see what the Bible says is the show behind the show. But what I do want to address today is the fact that we live in such a superficial world that if we don't stop and remind ourselves that everybody's putting on a show. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say people are fake. Don't get me wrong. We all get dressed. We all have to go to the gym. We all have to try to do different things to to make sure we're put together and look the part and look good professionally, okay? That's expected. But we live in a world that has become so superficial that we should know better than to trust social media. Ladies, you know how hard it is to make a single day pass. So don't let yourself be discouraged or deceived by Supermom on Instagram who makes it look like it's so easy who just has everything lined up and she looks like she's a model and the kids like what you don't realize is is that is not real you're not seeing the real show we live in a world now to where we're judged by these things and, and you 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 want to compare yourself to something that's not real you you want to we we've elevated things that are not legitimized and and we let these things dictate our lives our happiness our joy our peace that if we don't do it like this person and and if our kids don't have louis or gucci and if our kids don't have all this let me tell you something that ain't never been true and it still ain't today none of that matters because what good is it to have a kid who has designer clothes but don't even know his mama's name there's a nanny raising that baby <laughs> The mama's too busy posting. She's a social media influencer. You get what I'm saying? And so the reality is our values got to be not skewed, but brought back into what true beauty is, brought back into what true responsibility and love is. It's not what we see on the Instagram post. It's not what we see on TV. It's not what the mass media tells us it is. It's what we're about to read here today. That's what makes a mother a mother. That's what makes her a virtuous woman. It ain't about how things look on social media. It's not about the picture. It's always been and always will be about the show behind the show. Proverbs 31 verse 10 says this, Who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her so he will have no lack of gain. 
She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it from her profit. She plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out. By night, she stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat, or eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. And all God's people said amen. amen. This description is a nonstop barrage of what goes into the life of being a mother and a woman. Some people look and say, well, that's just too much. Well, the reality is, is that's what it is. That's not too much. That's a very real description. That's not how it should be. That's the lives that you live already, ladies. Right? You feel me? I look at everything. Rise up early in the morning. Got to make sure everybody else is took care of. All my life when I was at home. Now, eventually, they get to the age, and as I did, and, 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 and Caleb's about to get, he's getting into high school. Buddy, let me tell you, you better set your own dog on alarm. I ain't going to wake you till up no more. Amen. But all my life, I remember my mom would wake me up. Listen, me and my dad have great relationship. I love my father. He was my hero. But the older I've gotten and the more I see my wife and my boys, the more I appreciate not only my wife but the work my mother did when I was a child. Always waking me up, being ready for the day. You know, because when you're six, seven years old, if you're, you can't iron your clothes. Your mama irons your clothes. So my mom had my clothes ironed and had me breakfast ready. Baby, do you got your homework? Baby, do you got everything else that you need? All right, let me, and I always got, I never, all my needs were met because my mother took care of me. See, because when I went to bed, she stayed up getting ready for the next day. Oh, come on, somebody. Some of y'all going to be calling y'all's mamas today. Uh-huh, y'all get out of here. Mom, I love you. Happy Mother's Day. I'm sorry, I ain't told you. I ain't told you lately, but I love you. I appreciate all you. Some of y'all going to make some phone calls, and rightfully so. Amen. And I look at the same thing in my wife and all that she does. Let me tell you something. My wife works a full-time job. She also has had health issues going on. But all that being considered, she's never not been fully invested and involved making sure the household was taken care of. Amen. Ladies, you know because you lived that life. Fellas, I know we work hard. Amen. I know we provide. We're called to be providers and defenders. That's what we are as husbands and men of God. But that don't mean that we can't also appreciate and praise our wives and praise the mother of our children for putting in work that we are not yet ourselves capable of doing. Don't act that way. You and I both know it's the truth. A mother has compassion on her children when the father has wrath. Come on, somebody. If it was up to me, I'd just be taking the belt nonstop every day. I got a, pro I got a solution to this problem. I'll just beat the boy up. Mm. Mama will explain it. Mama will be patient with the baby. Here's what a mama does. A baby, a baby, listen, here's the truth. When, when the baby falls and scrapes its knee, mama picks up the baby, she blows on it. She kisses the boo-boo and makes it all better. That little baby's crying tears. They're hurt, and mama picks up the baby. She blows on its little knee, right? Blows on the scrape, kisses it. Is this okay? And the baby, hmm. Here's what, here's what fathers do. I, here's what I grew up with. Fall down, scrape your knee. Here's what my dad said. I start crying. Do it again, son. I didn't see it. <laughs> that was my life. Why are you crying? I, I hurt my knee. Do it again. I didn't see it. Boy, you know what that does? When you little and you hear that enough, you start going to mama when you get hurt. <laughs> right? How many of y'all? You didn't go to daddy. You want to run to mama because mama would take care of you. Mama would love on you. 
Mama would take care of that boo-boo, and you would feel safe and loved. My God, thank God for some mamas in the house today. The reality is the show behind the show takes a lot of work, takes a lot of planning, takes a lot of effort. And ladies, you, you, today is your day, and it should be. And, and it's not, I know it almost sounds commercialized there. I'm just talking about, mother. here's the thing. This is not a commercial thought. This is a biblical thought because God created the household and God created woman for man. God created woman to be all that she is. And I want today to champion. I want today to validate. And I want to praise and give glory for the women of God that God has created and called you to be the woman that you are in the house today. And I know we live in a world today that says you're supposed to be everything else. But I want to champion and applaud you today for your feminine self, your beautiful womanly self, that is the woman God called you, created you to be. You ain't got to live by the world standards and don't let the world tell you what you need to do and should be. You let you be what God's called you to be and the rest will take care of itself. And everybody said, yeah. hallelujah. And so I want to applaud the ladies today and understand that the show behind the show, listen, it's, it's, it's always been that way. We come here today and we understand that in order for us to be saved, to be born again, all we have to do, all we have to do is, is confess our sins and repent of our sins and put our faith, hope, and trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And then we profess his name. Then we are saved by grace through faith. That's pretty simple. But the show behind the show was a lot more difficult, a lot more ugly, a lot more challenging than what we have today. Thank God for salvation by grace through faith. But it's not just so simple as grace through faith. We realize today that what gives us the grace through faith is a Savior being beaten with a cat of nine tails, being his beard ripped out of his face, being marched up a hill naked, carrying a sinner's cross, which was your cross and my cross, being nailed to a cross, and having the blood drained from his body hanging there for nearly six hours as he died for us. That's what the show behind the show was. It's never so easy as the finished product. The work goes in behind the scenes and what happens today if we're not careful, we, 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 we fail to be appreciative as we should. Thank God for grace through faith. Salvation uh, through, through, through faith and through grace but if we're not careful, we forget the price that was paid and then we, we become entitled and we, we lose our sense of gratitude to our Lord and Savior. That's what happens. We come here and we, we're sitting on comfortable chairs. Air conditioned. Well, can I tell you, I come from a long line of preachers and I, I come from a, a lineage of preachers and men and women of God and I hear the stories and I've seen pictures to where they didn't always have comfortable chairs. Matter of fact, they didn't have air conditioning. Matter of fact, they had nothing but sawdust floors and a pot belly stove in the middle of a room. And there wasn't a, they had to open a window and they still would come together however they needed to to give glory and honor to Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. But today, with the times in our culture, we've gotten so, so comfortable, we've gotten so complacent with life, we forget about the show behind the show. Like even here today was a little bit of a mess. I get it. We had some technological issues, but you don't understand what goes on behind closed doors to make a Sunday morning service happen. You don't realize that when you got out that car today and somebody pulled that door open for you and somebody was waiting at that lobby desk and somebody was in that cafe, we just come and say, oh, cafe's open, not realizing that there are people who set their alarm, who got up early and got here extra early and made that food and got stuff prepared to be there for you. We're sitting here today and we expect to have kids' ministries. We expect to have our needs met for our children. We don't realize, we forget to realize that there's somebody back there in that nursery right now who would like to be here on Mother's Day because it's their Mother's Day too, but they are sacrificing being in God's house in here today so they can be back there serving your children. Come on, somebody. The show behind the show. The reality is today is a day that should draw our attention to gratefulness to thankfulness and being mindful of all that goes in to being a mother because it is vast it is massive the amount of work it's massive the effort that goes into today but as we honor our mothers today as we become mindful of all that our moms did for us as we become mindful of all men husbands that our wives and the mother of our children do for our kids we should have gratitude. We should be thankful. Because I'm telling you, as much as I love my boys, I can't do what their mama does. 
So maybe some of you men can, but I'm, I'm here today. I'm okay with admitting that I'm not as strong in some areas. I'm okay admitting that she does stuff that I can't do. And I'm grateful for that. But you know what? In that vein, we also ought to be able to flip this thing and be reminded to be grateful of all that God's done for us in the same vein. Because you know what? The Lord did something we couldn't do. He did what you couldn't do for yourself, didn't he? We fail, and the only answer, the only way we could get better was by his blood to be shed in our place. And the price that was paid, the agony, the torment, all that went in to the cross so that we could have salvation, so that we could sit in here in a church service with all the air conditioning, have a preacher with his tie on today and his jacket on, looks a little different. I know it's a little, some of y'all are weirded out. What is God's name going on? What happened to Pastor Josh? He was wearing leather pants two weeks ago, and now he's got on a jacket. The reality is all this today is a beautiful thing that God has afforded us to have, but the reality is the whole, the whole reason we're here is not because of a podium, not because of a suit jacket, not because of the songs, not because of Mother's Day. The reason we're here today is because that a Savior died on a cross for us to be born again. That's the reason why we're here today. The reason why we can have hope and joy, the reason why we can have victory over fear, the reason why we can have an expected end, the reason why we can have a future in eternity is because there's an empty tomb that our Lord and Savior got up out of. I'm thankful today for the show behind the show, the production that went into making this happen. Now the part, and I'm about to close, The part that's obvious is whenever a show ends, and if you've ever been to one of these productions, what happens is, is when the show ends, the cast all gets together in the front, and everybody's applauding. And the cast gets headed. But nobody, if you realize the actors, the production staff, the set designers, the coordinators, they don't come out and get their bow. The people out front, the actors, they get all the applause because they were seen. But they did not work harder than the people behind the curtain who are now drenched in sweat. They've moved the sets. They've turned stuff. They've looked, and they're back there huffing and puffing and nobody is giving them a round of applause even though they were a part of the production. Anybody with me? Anybody listening? That's become what we're used to. So we lose an appreciation for the unseen work. We lose the appreciation and we don't honor the unseen work. And that's not anybody's fault. Thank God for the people that are seen. Thank God for what we are able to see and recognize. But thank God even more so for the work that goes on that we didn't see. The, thing, the, the show behind the show. Everybody gets the applause up front, but who gets them in the back? Who gets the recognition for doing the work behind the scenes? I, for one, and this is not the closing, but that's, that's why I'm so grateful for our serve teams. I really am, and I try to tell them every Sunday we get them up here, I try to tell them I appreciate the work they put in because it's because of people showing up here at 8.30 in the morning on a Sunday. Everybody else is still asleep. They're here getting ready. Or somebody like Sister Angela Bronson. I'm so glad that you won that massage, sister. So grateful that you won that massage. Yes. Amen. 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 See, Sister Angela gets here. It's, she don't just serves every Sunday. Every Sunday. Lining stuff up. And here's the thing. Not only does she serve, she trains people. So when in, in the event that she does have to miss, she's got women of God that she has poured into and that she's trained and spent time with. It's the show behind the show. I'm thankful for our teams here today. Amen. Amen. 
It's one of those things. I'm so grateful for my wife, and she gets up here and she sings and all that. But the reality is, being a pastor's wife is a difficult task because everybody loves the pastor. Or <laughs> at first, everybody loves the pastor until he says something or does something they don't like. Then he's a villain, you know. But I get appreciated because I'm always up here preaching. Everybody gets to see me. They don't see the work behind the work. They don't see the show behind the show. And so I'm appreciative of her, and I applaud her today for all that she does behind the scenes. But amen. But at the end of the day, when the show's over, they come out, everybody claps and applauds, and the people in the back don't get the recognition. The reality today is, does the Lord have our recognition? Does he have our appreciation? Are we mindful of all that goes on? Because here's the reality. The work of God didn't stop at the cross. The Lord's work didn't stop with the tomb being empty. The Bible says that right now, as of right now today, that you and I who are born again, we have a high priest who sits, not sat. We have a high priest who sits at the right hand of God making intercession daily for those who he loves. My God have mercy. Which means that every single day of my life when I'm not mindful of it. Y'all see, listen, we thank God for a praying mama and all the church said amen. Hallelujah. Thank God because mamas don't stop mama in just because the baby got 18 and left the house or graduated. A mama's going to be a mama as long as there's breath in her body. Amen. She's going to keep loving that baby. She's going to always be there for her child. She's always... Listen, in the same way, though, day after day, God has not stopped moving. Every single day, there is a Savior who not just died for me, but he prays for me every day at the throne room of God. When I ain't got nobody else, and I feel like I'm all alone, there's a show behind the show where Jesus himself says, Father, forget not my son down there. He might be struggling today. And God, he may feel alone, or he may have forgotten. But God, you hear my voice, and when there ain't nobody else, I'm the one that will be lifting him up. Every day behind the curtain there's work being done for your soul. Entertaining angels unaware, you knoweth not. My God, I'm speaking in the King James Version. You knoweth not. Sometimes I really feel the anointing. I start speaking like that. I don't know what it is. I start speaking in my King James self. Thou knowest not what thine haveth in thine self. You don't know that every day the enemy has a plan to destroy you every day of your life. Et, somebody say the devil's busy. Every day the enemy has a plan to take you out. Every single day. Well, I don't know if I believe that. That's because you don't understand the value of a soul. You've been fooled and desensitized by the Facebook stuff, see? All the Instagram and Snap stuff. The reality is your soul is so priceless that the enemy has a plan. You ain't got to be Pastor Josh for the enemy to want you. He wants you, period. He wants to destroy. He comes to do three things, still kill, and destroy. And every day, there's a plan to destroy you. Every day. Every day there's a plan for your car to get hit by a semi. Every day there's a plan for something to fall on your head. Every day there's a plan for you to choke to death in your sleep. Every day there's a plan for you to get sick with a disease and die. But every day there is a guardian angel. There is a guard that God calls forth and speaks over you and pleads the blood of Jesus over you for your protection, for your well-being, that there no weapon formed against you shall prosper, though he may try. He can't touch what God has appointed. And, I, and when's the last time we went to bed saying, God, thank you that I made it through today. Lord, I know the enemy tried to take me out so many times a day that I couldn't see. But God, you got a plan for me. Let me honor you with my praise. Let me serve you with my life. God, how can I not be thankful for the show behind the show? Every day. Every single day. 
But every day, the Bible says the footsteps of a righteous man are ordained by God. You don't realize that every day you may think, the Bible says you may, you may make your plans, but it's the Lord who establishes your steps. Every day. See, you thought when traffic diverted you from one way to work to the other, you thought that was just traffic. When in reality, you don't know what might have been laying in wait for you on that route had God not ordained for you to go the other way. Oh, Pastor, that just seems... A, no, I'm sorry. You must not read the Bible because if God cares enough to know the number of the hairs on my head, then he cares enough to say, I'm going to protect you and send you right when you were going to go left. I'm going to intervene even in... I'm going to intervene even in the restaurant you were going to choose to go eat at today. You didn't realize it because I was working behind the scenes. You thank me for the food. You didn't thank My God, have mercy. I got to hurry and finish. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. That's praise. That's praise. Fathers, husbands, I have been convicted lately. Can I be transparent with you? Is that okay? I've been convicted lately. Let me get this. I, I just live real life, and maybe I shouldn't say all the things I, sh I say to y'all because maybe y'all maybe y'all should not know all these things. But I got a 14-year-old who's a great kid. He loves the Lord. He's a great young man. He's, he's wonderful. So it's not a him problem. It's an age problem. That that mouth starts. And I've tried to play it off, son. I know you're just cutting up. I know you're just playing around. And, but I got convinced to the point the other day he said something to his mom. I said, boy, <laughs> woo! It's kind of like the YouTube shows where they'll play a prank on the dad and the son will tell his mama to shut up and the dad's like, Wah! you know what I'm saying? It's getting that point. I said, I, I, so I sat him down. I said, buddy, this is, with, this is with him in the hospital, by the way. He was in the hospital. His, his lungs, he got, his asthma had such a severe attack. He was in the hospital for like three days. When we got home, I said, listen, I ain't going to do it right now because he was doing it at the hospital. I said, let me tell you what's about to happen, son. I ain't going to warn your tail again. Next week, when this is behind you, the next time I hear that smart mouth say something, I'm going to catch you, so help me God. I'm going to catch you, and you're going to feel pain like you never felt in your life. You understand? I'm not playing. Do you understand what I'm telling you, boy? I'm, I'm, I, I, my hand to God, hand to the Bible, I'm about to rough your behind up. Because you can't curse from the same tongue that you bless. And now's the time for me to instill in that little 14-year-old behind that your children rise and call you blessed. If I ever hear you say anything other than this to your mama, I'm going to beat your ever-loving behind. I don't care if you're 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. As long as I'm able, if i got to take a two-by-four to the back of your head. Try me today. Try me today. But you know what? It doesn't stop with just correction and discipline. They need to hear me praise their mother. Many daughters you've had, but baby, you excel them all. They had, there's pretty girls all around the world, but ain't none fine as you. Mm. <laughs> to praise her, her children rise her and her husband also. So I praise her. I need to praise her in front of them more than what I currently do. Is that it? Can I be okay with that? Can I be transparent? I need to do a better job at praising her. On the flip side, not only, and I think there's a lot of us that could echo for, not just Pastor Josh, if we're being honest, hopefully. I mean, if I'm the only one that needs to fix that, Jesus, have mercy on my soul. What's wrong with me? I don't think that's the case, but on the flip side, we should rise and give him praise we should give him praise not just because listen her children rise and call her blessed this is talking about the act of every day rising and blessing rising and blessing 
We're really good about praising God when He blesses us and something good happens or something we perceive as good happens. We'll praise God then. But the reality is every day of our lives ought to be filled with the praise of God from our lips and lungs to His throne room every day. Every day we ought to rise and bless His name. We ought to rise and praise Him for all that He's done. The question this morning is, are we willing to see the show behind the show or are we content and have we decided that we're just going to watch the performance have we decided that we're not we're not we don't even want to acknowledge the, we don't want to acknowledge the behind the curtain we we enjoy the show pastor i enjoy the production too much to worry about what's going on behind closed doors pastor i enjoy i enjoy sunday morning service too much to worry about what goes on spiritually in my life monday through saturday i just i really like what i got going on on sundays i enjoy coming and watching my weekly show well why would you settle when you could have a backstage pass there ain't a person here today if your favorite music act was in town and they offered you a backstage pass to hang out with the artist, there ain't a single one of y'all that would turn it down. My God, thank the Lord the teens are out there because if I said we had backstage at Taylor Swift, they'd be fainting and passing out. Believe it or not, when I was 14, if you'd have gave me backstage passes to the Backstreet Boys, I'd have took it. I love the Backstreet Boys. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't too proud to admit that nowadays. Back then, I'd have said, oh, I don't like them, but... Uh, there's not a one of us who would turn down our backstage passes. Why then are we turning down the backstage passes to spend time with the presence of Almighty God? Why are we content just going to the show on Sunday mornings whenever we could be backstage with Him, sitting in His dressing room, talking with Him, hanging? Y'all, I know it's a crude analogy, but it's the truth. Why do we settle for the Sunday morning show? We could have Him week after week backstage intimate involvement, getting to know him for who he is. Because there are certain things that only happen privately. What you see on stage ain't always what that person is off the stage. And while God is God, what you get corporately is wonderful. What we get publicly is wonderful. But I'm telling you from experience, what we all get together is still no match for what I get when I'm alone with God. Would you stand to your feet this morning?